Following the battle to liberate Earth, Batman learned that Luthor had bequeathed his massive fortune to Bruce Wayne. He now had the means to rebuild Gotham and Metropolis. The city's residents, inspired by their hero's efforts, adopted the slogan, We Are Batman. They contributed countless hours to their community's renovation and crime prevention. The Batman of old would have stubbornly assumed these tasks alone. The post-One Earth Batman, having been rewarded for his trust in others, enjoyed his city's renewal and his role as its benefactor. Nightwing had beaten his former boss, Superman, in single combat. Not even Batman had done that. His thirst for conflict grew. He began challenging anyone who crossed his path. Nightwing's belligerence eventually drew the attention of Sinestro. His core was always in need of new recruits, and the young human seemed able to inspire great fear. Sinestro had his suspicions confirmed when a yellow power ring found its way onto Nightwing's finger. Flash had taken down the High Counselor, but the atrocities he had abetted during Superman's regime continued to haunt him. His shame eventually drove him into exile. Whether wishing to make further amends or simply unable to stop himself, Flash continued to use his powers in the pursuit of justice. Rumors of a mysterious red streak of energy that would set upon and incapacitate criminals circulated throughout Central City. While only some deduced his true name, most felt gratitude and affection for the new hero they called the Ghost. Banishing his friend and former teammate Superman to the Phantom Zone was difficult for Jean Jones, but necessary. As the One Earth regime had formed, Jean, ever the outsider, had chosen to watch from a distance to bide his time. He assumed the form of an Atlantean and served as royal archivist. Aquaman little suspected that his trusted subject's uncanny ability to gather news of the surface world was the result of telepathic powers. When Jean learned that heroes from a parallel dimension were aiding Batman's insurgency, he assisted as well, leading rescue operations in Metropolis and Gotham after Superman's rampage. In the post-regime era, the Martian Manhunter continued to serve his adopted world, gathering the next generation of heroes to form a new Justice League. Though pleased with the outcome, Superman's battle with his duplicate left him troubled. If one Superman could go so far astray, why not another? Preventative measures were in order. After much discussion with his fellow Justice Leaguers, Superman ingested a remote-release kryptonite capsule. At any sign of instability, the kryptonite would permeate his body, killing him. The question of who could trigger the device was solved democratically. Each week, a different leaguer would take possession of its remote control. Only Batman was denied a shift. After the fall of Superman, Green Arrow visited the star city of this parallel Earth. His counterpart was one of the first heroes to fall in the battle against Superman, one of the first to object to the Man of Steel's new tactics and reasoning. A memorial erected in Star City's Orchid Bay served as a reminder of the need to fight oppression regardless of the odds. There, Green Arrow found that one citizen wasn't content to memorialize Oliver Queen in stone. With Green Arrow's training, a new archer, dressed in crimson, took up the fallen hero's mantle. Let Star City's criminals beware. The knight belongs to Red Arrow.
After Superman's defeat, Cyborg led the assault on the Fortress of Solitude to flush out remnants of the High Counselor's regime. The fortress was well defended, the battle intense. Cyborg was forced to use unfamiliar Kryptonian tools to make repairs to his damaged cybernetics. Enhanced with the alien technology, Cyborg found he could communicate with Superman's androids and order them to apprehend the opposition. With his army of super androids, Cyborg will bring justice to the world. The defeat of Superman was a relief to Zatanna. During the regime, she and Dr. Fate had taken advantage of Superman's vulnerability to magic and turned the Tower of Fate into a sanctuary for Superman's enemies. She had saved many lives, but years of subterfuge weighed heavily upon her. After the regime's downfall, Zatanna was instrumental in restraining metahumans during their trials. But when a jury recommended the death penalty for the more immutable defendants, Zatanna intervened. She took the prisoners to the Tower of Fate. There they would remain, incarcerated, but alive. Wonder Woman returned home to find her dimension in ruins. Aware of Superman's despotic rule of the parallel dimension, the gods of Olympus vowed to preemptively eliminate the metahuman scourge from their world. Under the direction of Zeus, they hunted down and eliminated nearly all super-powered mortals. All that remained to oppose them was Themyscira. Wonder Woman and her Amazons fought back against the Olympians with unrelenting courage. Despite heavy losses, Wonder Woman's forces ultimately prevailed. They took reign as the new Olympians, ushering in an age of peace and prosperity. Victory over Superman was only the beginning of Aquaman's rise to power. Uniting the world's oceans under the banner of Atlantis, Aquaman had a controlling interest in the planet's ecology and economy. His influence did not escape the attention of the world's multinational corporations, who looked to end his reign. Villains lured by the promise of big money to assassinate the King of Atlantis pursued him relentlessly. But Aquaman's popularity served him well. The world's citizens rose up in anger against those who would quell Aquaman's influence. The threat abated. A groundswell of support began for a united Earth under Aquaman's command. Winning the battle with Superman cost Raven dearly. The amount of demonic energy required overwhelmed her. After regaining consciousness, she looked around warily. Her immediate surroundings were a hellish ruin. Nearby stood her father, Trigon. Raven had somehow called him forth during her battle. Trigon thanked his daughter. He then summoned an army of demons and set out to destroy the rest of the planet. Free of his brainwashing, Hawk Girl exacted revenge on the High Counselor for murdering her husband, Hawkman. She was nevertheless sent to prison for her role in the regime. One night, she awoke hovering above her cot, glowing with eldritch light. An instant later, she stood at the bottom of a shallow crater. There, she found the source of the light, a meteorite of pure nth metal. As she touched it, the meteorite sprung to life, encasing her in Nth metal. The new armor made Hawk Girl invincible. Her first act? Vengeance against those who had helped Superman capture Hawkman. Following the events in the parallel dimension, Shazam's fellow heroes returned home. But an alien virus contracted during the transfer created in them acute mental instability. They turned on their fellow crime fighters in a deranged fury. 
alone and desperate, Shazam shared the power of the word with his adopted brothers and sisters. Their purity of heart gave them courage. The army of Shazam incapacitated the former heroes. Eventually, they took the place of the Justice League as primary defenders of Earth. Mere days after returning to his Earth, Green Lantern, in an event mirroring his ascension to the core, witnessed the crash landing of an alien ship. Investigating the wreckage, he encountered the pilot, who claimed to be Abin Sur. But this Abin Sur wore no power ring, and referred to him in halting breaths as the Almighty One. Green Lantern tried to convince the alien of their past, that Abin Sur had named Hal Jordan his successor as the Green Lantern of Sector 2814. But the alien died from his wounds before Lantern could learn more of him. Lantern left immediately for Oa. The Guardians were his only hope of solving this mystery. Not all heroes were destroyed by Superman. Some were actually created by him. A technology wizard, Barbara Gordon had eluded detection by One Earth Intelligence, feeding information to the insurgency under the code name Oracle. But after the regime's murder of her father, Gotham Police Commissioner James Gordon, Barbara channeled her anger into a new alter ego. Sensing the right opportunity to strike, she attacked Superman directly. By defeating the High Counselor, she had announced Batgirl to the world in impressive fashion. There was no shortage of vendettas during Superman's reign, and no shortage of bounties for Lobo to collect. He became one of the richest men in the universe by assassinating those who ran afoul of the High Counselor. Lobo's already massive ego inflated along with his rising wealth. Lobo searched for an assignment worthy of his abilities. With so many super-powered beings already dead at his hand, however, bounties were scarce. Lobo decided to use his wealth to create his own ultimate contract. He would kill the denizens of New Genesis, home of the New Gods. Though he had failed to elevate the Joker clan status, Joker was convinced a similar organization could be successful in his dimension. Joker used a series of devastating terrorist acts to frighten the populace, then convinced the more gullible among them that he was the path to security. The new Joker clan soon had millions of members worldwide and committed regular anti-government attacks, wreaking havoc on the global economy. The defeat of Superman filled Harley with confidence. She knew what she was capable of and knew what she wanted. She traveled to the visitor's Earth and freed the Joker from prison. Returning to her world, they married in a ceremony that set Gotham ablaze. At the reception, the cake-cutting ceremony took a gruesome turn. As her new husband playfully mashed her face into the cake, years of abuse took its toll. Something in Harley snapped. She used the ceremonial knife to slash Joker's throat. Still wearing her wedding gown, Harley now resides permanently in Arkham Asylum. The battle over, Grundy eluded capture and returned to his swamp to heal his wounds. During regeneration, Grundy found he could channel the elemental force of the Red. All animal life would bend to his rule. His increased power also allowed him to resurrect the long-lost Grey Force. Now, instead of ruling Earth's creatures, he could simply destroy them. 
After defeating the world's heroes, Grundy turned Earth into his version of paradise. He now rules over a gray and lifeless planet. Free of the Phantom Zone at last, Zod's first order of business, Superman's defeat, had been accomplished. Now his revenge could be fully realized. His time in the Phantom Zone had allowed Zod to learn its secrets. He had even learned from one of his fellow residents how to call forth small pockets of it at will. After introducing Superman to its mind-numbing emptiness, Zod claimed the High Counselorship and began to rebuild Earth in the image of mighty Krypton. A win against this world's Superman was greatly satisfying, but its aftermath would be sweeter still. Luthor had traveled to this dimension to convince its residents that he was their Luthor, who had miraculously survived the High Counselor's globally televised attack on him. Beloved before, the triumphant Luthor was now worshipped. He was elected President of the United States, but soon looked to further consolidate his power. At last, Superman had paid for what he had done to Catwoman. Feigning allegiance to his regime had cost Selina her beloved Batman and her best chance at happiness. Pride and anger kept her from attempting reconciliation with Bruce Wayne, but his inspiring reconstruction of Gotham and Metropolis fostered in her a desire to remain close to him. Until she was ready to approach him again, she did her part to keep Gotham's streets clear of crime. Nascent underworld organizations had both the bat and the cat to fear. With Superman's regime toppled, new governments formed to take its place. New governments meant new customers for Deathstroke, and business was booming. Soon there were more assassinations to carry out, revolutions to aid, and unrest to create than he could manage on his own. The One Earth regime's elite troopers, having committed atrocities in Superman's name, had gone into hiding from a populace bent on revenge. Impossible for most to find, but not for Deathstroke. Recruiting these renegades, he formed the New Titans, the world's premier political assassins. The fool in the red cape had been dealt with. Now Scorpion would learn how he came to this place. Heretofore, only the sorcerer Quan Chi or the fallen elder god Shinnok could have summoned him. Scorpion's answers appeared in the form of Trigon, who accused Scorpion of deserting Trigon's demon army and stealing from him the glory of besting the High Counselor. The two faced each other in a titanic struggle. Scorpion emerged the victor and assumed control of Trigon's invasion force. Soon this strange new land would be his to rule. Superman's defeat did not work to Ares' advantage as he had planned. The heroes of the Parallel Dimension helped this world's Batman build a conflict-free utopia that left the War God famished. On the brink of death, Ares managed to imprison Brainiac V. He forced Brainiac to create a time loop beginning with the other dimensional heroes' arrival and ending just before their victory. In this pocket of time, Ares flourished. Endless war was his to savor. Killer Frost reveled in her victory, but her overconfidence betrayed her. Seizing the opportunity, agents of Star Labs captured her. 
Their scientists harnessed her freezing power in order to fortify the world's polar ice caps. But Star Labs underestimated Frost's abilities. Turning on her captors, she froze their facility and eventually the entire Western Hemisphere. The survivors now struggle to overthrow the self-proclaimed Ice Queen. Free of Superman's control, Doomsday eradicated the remaining metahumans. He then manipulated technology in the abandoned fortress of solitude to terraform the Earth. It soon resembled prehistoric Krypton. At last, it felt like home. After a few years of exterminating humanity at his leisure, however, Doomsday needed a challenge. Having assimilated Superman's ability to fly, he headed for a nearby space sector. He had heard rumors of an opponent worthy of his attention, a Cezanian mercenary with a taste for violence. Doomsday was eager to meet this Lobo in battle. When Superman's One Earth regime proved to be a failure similar to his on Korrigar, Sinestro retreated to deep space to ruminate on its demise. Fear had long seemed the most powerful of the emotions with which to bring order to the universe, yet it had not been enough. Desperate, Sinestro hurled the might of the Sinestro core against the life entity, keeper of the white power battery. Ultimately victorious, Sinestro now wielded the power of a White Lantern. No adversary could possibly withstand him. The light of the Green Lantern core would be the first he would extinguish. The defeat of Superman taught Black Adam one thing. Most of Earth's denizens were too weak to adopt Kandak's visionary form of government. He returned to his homeland with a new plan. Combining their energies, Black Adam and his Empress Isis created a mystical barrier around Kandak. There they reigned in peace, their country an oasis in the wasteland of human civilization. A true oasis once Black Adam had destroyed all other life on Earth. Superman had been a fool to believe Bane would willingly accept a subordinate role in the One Earth government. With the High Counselor out of the way, true leadership could begin. Though they lacked intelligence, Bane found in Sinestro and Black Adam inspiring examples of ruthless, absolute authority. They reciprocated his regard for their talents. The three former villains regained control of the planet and formed a ruling triad that would be uninterrupted until the next phase of Bane's plan. 